Hi everybody and welcome back to Exploring AWS. In this video we're going to take a look at the different support plans that are offered by AWS. Now if you are just tinkering around, you just have your own little personal account and it's not a business account, you're not putting any production or business apps in the cloud, um, you're probably not concerned with the support model. But if this is going to be an enterprise level account, if this is a business account, even if you have a small business or even if you have you know lab workloads that you know need to stay up all the time that you're you know tinkering on or maybe you're studying for your CCIE or something, I don't know. Um, and you have some virtual routers up there, you know, I don't know, I'm making that up. Um, point is, is that you're going to want to be familiar with the different kind of support models that you're going to get. So I am logged into my management console just because since we're doing so many videos on AWS, it's just easier for me to be logged in. Um, but you're going to want to come over here to the upper right-hand corner. You're going to click this drop down and say support center. Now this is going to drop us into the actual support page for AWS. Now this is where I can come in and I can create a ticket. I can see all the, the previous cases that I've, that I've submitted. Um, and we're going to have some different white pages papers and some different things that we have available. Now, the reason why I have, your view may be a little bit different. Let me just start there. The main reason why, ha, why I have open support cases and all these uh, all these different options is because I have an enterprise level agreement. Uh, I have a linked account with Cisco. Many of you know that I work for Cisco. So my account, even though it's, it's essentially a personal account that I use to log in, um, it's linked with Cisco's enterprise account, which means my support tier falls underneath theirs. So I have a full enterprise support package. Um, so this is this brings me to my next point is not all of you are going to have the ability to actually open up cases. So there are four different tiers. In fact, let me go over here. Let me grab my pen here for a quick second. There are four tiers and we'll take a look uh, in AWS in a minute. There are four tiers that that are available. You have the base. Uh, then you have the developer, then you have what we would call the business tier, and then you have the enterprise tier. Okay, so these are the four basic tiers uh, that you're going to get within AWS. Now, every single person that has an AWS account is going to get the base tier. This is going to give you access to all the documentation, the forums, the white papers, uh, and it's going to give you trusted advisor. Now, trusted advisor are different checks and different things that you're going to have available to you to make sure that your account is essentially operating under best practices. Now, that being said, let's let me erase uh, the, the writing on the screen here, and let's head over and let's actually take a look at some of the support plans. This way, you're you're familiar with them. So let's open this up in a new tab, and this is something that again is going to be readily available to you. I won't go through all of the different options here because you know you can read through them, but again, you'll notice here that there are first of all, there's only three listed. If you'll notice, there's developer, business, and enterprise. They do not list the base because the base is one that everybody has. So in this support model, if you're looking on your screen, you'll notice. Notice that the, the developer is going to get access to the seven core checks. Um, if you click on this button here, the checks, so if you're, if you're looking at your screen or you're following along, if you select checks, you'll notice that it's the same link on each one. It will bring you to the same site. But notice how it says seven core checks. And so I want to list what those are. So the first core check is S3 permissions, right? So we're just going to say S3 per. Uh, so the first core check is going to be S3 permissions, okay? The next core check is going to be your security groups. So this is going to be where you're allowing permission in and out of different workloads. This is going to be, uh, you know, if you have a web server, for example, where you would allow port 80 or port 443. Uh, so this is going to be another core check that you can run. Uh, the next one is going to be IAM roles. So this is IAM. I kind of butchered that, but <clears throat> but this is going to be your uh, your IAM roles. IAM roles are basically your different permissions. So for example, I am JP Sedino, right? When I log into AWS and I use my login, this is my root account. One of the system checks that is going to be run is, is going to be, listen, do not use your root account. Create another account. That account could be admin or it could be, you know, support. It could be whatever you want it to be where you're going to use this account to log in and leave your root account separate. So you're not always using your primary account to log in. You're using a secondary account that has limited permissions to only what that role is. And that's where that's where this I am comes in. It's an I am role that says, look, I am the admin or I I am, you know, the, the report person or whatever it may be. You're also going to have multi-factor authentication. This is going to be where, uh, you know, I mean, the, the definition is self-explanatory, where you're going to be setting up 
uh, multi-factor authentication on your cell phone. There's a free app that you can download onto your iPhone, and, and AWS will walk you through all of this stuff on how to do it. Uh, then you're going to have your EBS and your RDS. Uh, these are these are two different roles. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one more um, public snapshots. So we'll just say SS for snapshots. Okay. So this is going to be your EBS and your RDS snapshots if you're using those services. Okay. If you're not using them, then you know it doesn't matter. Uh, and then the last one is going to be your service limits. <clears throat> Service limits. I know I'm trying to write fast here to, to not make this video too long. So these are going to be your seven core checks that you have. Your S3 permissions, your security groups, your IM roles, multi-factor authentication, EBS and RDS snapshots, and your service limits. Okay. This is going to be what every, I should say, your base and your developer are going to get. This is what these seven core values are going to be. However, you'll notice that if you go with a business and enterprise, you're going to get more values. So you're going to get all the full system checks across the, the trusted advisor world. And if you open this up to another tab, you know, you'll, you'll be able to read through what each and every single one of these are. In fact, if you, uh, if you remember the, the seven cores that we just went over and you want to read a little bit more about those, such as the S3 bucket permissions, you'll be able to see those here. Everything that's labeled free is going to be part of that free tier or that free base support that you'll get. Now, another thing to keep in mind is what you're going to get from a technical uh, support perspective. So if you have base support, um, you're, you're, you're not going to get anything, right? So basic, you're not allowed to open up a ticket. You're, you're not allowed to do anything. The one thing I do want to mention, though, is that your, your base support does still allow you full access to AWS, meaning if you sign up for an account, you give your credit card number, <clears throat> you know, and you want to use RDS and DynamoDB and you want to use Elastic File Shares and uh, systems and all this kind of stuff, you can do that. doesn't matter what support agreement you have. So you can use a full range of AWS services. You just won't get support if something in your application isn't working, right? If you have base support. <clears throat> so the developer support, you're going to get email access within business hours, right? So this is, you know, essentially, you know, from I think it's nine to five or something like that. Um, but you'll get only email support business hours. Whereas you go to business and enterprise, you notice that the support agreement changes. So as you go to business, you get 24 by seven phone support, email, chat, uh, you get, you get cloud support engineers, um, each, each time you, you upgrade, you'll notice that it just brings you further down. So if you'll notice here, there, there's kind of this, this line being drawn. If you're familiar with support agreements, you know, it's kind of like this type of tier, right? Where, you know, the, the, the base model or the developer, uh, you know, ends here and then the next one ends here and then the next one ends, you know, kind of way down. So, uh, but again, you can read through all of this stuff, right? I'm not going to go through everything. I just want to show you kind of the, the big things to be to be aware of. So when you have the developer, you're, you're going to be able to get uh, email support. The thing that you want to remember with the, the developer support, though, is that you're only going to have one primary contact. So you're not going to be allowed to have, you know, 15 people on a support agreement. You're, you're going to have one person that has their email or their contact information registered with AWS that is allowed to open up a ticket or that is allowed to uh, allowed to have, you know, any kind of any kind of support services. This, I believe, starts at twenty nine dollars a month. And this is going to be tied to your usage. OK, so if you use more AWS, in fact, I think there is a cost breakdown on another um, let me see here. I'm going to go to change plans. Now I'm not going to be able to change my plan, but I believe there is a cost breakdown somewhere in here. Yes. Yeah, so your support plan, actually I'll use this screen instead. Uh, this one's a little bit easier to, to go through. And this one is the, the basic. So the basic is listed here, right? So you get basic customer service, but you won't be able to, uh, to actually open up a ticket or something like that. So, <clears throat> Um, cause you'll notice there's no technical support with the basic. So if you scroll down here, you'll get the cost. So starting at $29 per month, but this is also based on your usage, right? So if you use a lot more AWS services, you may be charged more than just $29 a month because of the uses that you actually have. Okay. And again, they give you general guidance and system impaired, right? So the, they're breaking these things down to, Hey, you know, um, I'm going to give you general guidance within 24 hours uh, or less than 24 hours. And if your system is impaired, meaning it's not a system down emergency and it's not production, you know, that that's really what we're going to help you with. That's, that's the top level support we're going to give you is less than four hour of uh, less than 12 hour response. So not the best support model if you have a production web server out in AWS that needs to be up 24 seven, right? So if we move on to the business support, again, you get a little bit more. So you'll notice how within your, uh, within your business support agreement, uh, you're going to get a little bit more, uh, 
uh, access, you're going to get all the, the trusted advisor checks. You're going to get um, a full set of, of support. So you're going to get unlimited access to all of the different documentation. You're going to get unlimited access to being able to open up cases. Again, you, you have one primary contact here. With, with business, you're, anybody who's registered with your account can open up a, a case. So you could have 25 people open up 25 cases, right? Each if you want, doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> You're going to get added these two tiers here, so production system impaired. So you got a production system that's not behaving quite right. Uh, you'll get support with it with less than four hours. And if you have a production system that's down, not operable, you'll get support within less than one hour, which is pretty cool, right? But again, there's a cost associated with this. Again, I'm not going to go through these architecture supports, et cetera. You can kind of read through those. This starts at $100 per month and, again, is going to be tied to your actual usage. So... You know, if you're using more, you may pay more, but it, it's not it's not the end of the world, right? Um, you also do get third-party software support, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then the last one, which is, again, what I have, lucky me, is the enterprise support agreement, which is essentially a full suite of everything. So if we have a business critical system down emergency, we can get support within 15 minutes. Uh, we get chat support, phone support. We get support engineers. Um, we also get a dedicated uh, account manager. Uh, and that's actually a technical account manager. So we we have a dedicated person attached to our account that essentially is responsible for managing our cases, make sure, making sure we get the right technical resources on the phone or on the chat or whatever we need to do. So again, this is this is like the kind of support that you would have within your own data center where if a system down emergency happens right now and it's critical, you know, everybody gets paged, everybody gets a chat, everybody's, you know, out of their office, out of their desk, up out of bed and in the data center. This is kind of the support that you would get with an enterprise level agreement. Scroll down, this is $1,500 per month and again, is gonna be based on your usage as well. You also do get a, a concierge support, which is kinda cool. But, um, and again, the dedicated uh, technical account manager, all that stuff is listed here and you can go and read through this. So, uh, you know, they do get a little bit pricey, but again, based on what you need and based on what you're gonna do, uh, that support model may be, may be good for you, right? So. Make sure you pick the right support. I would definitely not wait until you have your production applications in AWS to think about your support. Make sure you come, uh, you know, make sure you come here. Uh, make sure you log in. Make sure you go through the different support agreements and make sure that you pick the right one for your business.